Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Well, it's time to see the national stories, well, global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining me to review the papers is on the phone is GD Jensen, is the chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, is joining us from Lagos State. Good morning, Mr. GD Jensen. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and good morning to you. Good morning to you. Okay. Always a pleasure. All right, so we're going to go into the papers and we'll be starting with the punch this morning. And the first one, which is a major headline here, says school attacks, bandits demand 1 billion naira for 287 pupils um, issue March 27 deadline. Now, I'm, I'm sure you saw in the news that the president had spoken about ransom payments, saying um, there should be no ransom payments for these people who have been abducted. But now, obviously, we're seeing the bandits being upset and giving, issuing a deadline for March 27 and asking for a whooping one billion naira. What do you think of this whole thing? First, let me just read the, the, the writers here. It says, kidnappers called on Tuesday, gave us 20 days to raise ransom, says community leader. Um, hostages held in difficult location used as human shield to, pre to prevent bombardment. And that's been said by the DHQ. So I want to get your take on all of this, what's happening, uh, the way we're, we're seeing the rise in this whole kidnapping. In fact, it's almost like a business at the moment. And then with the president coming and saying there is, should be no ransom payment, I want to get your comments on this. Why should government be paying ransom to criminals? Uh, it's because we have been bad behavior in the past. That is why it has reinforced those behaviors that that are threat to national security mm. and threat to their security too. So as far as I'm concerned. The government should not negotiate with terrorists. These are terrorists. We are calling them to be advised. We are just doing economical with the truth. Because the, uh, if you could not do that, right, it is definitely people from schools and we are demanding one million naira. Then you are no longer a kidnapper, you are a terrorist. Terrorizing the community, terrorizing the nation, and terrorizing the people. So as far as I'm concerned, there should be a better approach of dealing with this particular problem. How is it easy for them to kidnap 287 people through this route? And how did they move them? What were the agencies of government in charge of security of those specific areas? What were they doing? What was the intelligence community of those particular areas? What were they doing? And then why would they have to resort to bombardment? to deal with this particular issue. I, I don't think we develop a better intelligence on how to combat this particular issue. Have a special force to deal with this particular issue. We still be faced with this recurrent problem. Because they, they be collecting hundreds of thousands, they move from hundreds of thousands to millions in ten, from millions to hundreds of millions, and we, couldn't able, we are not able to track them with their BBN number, with their mean number, and even with the currency, with the, with the, can they mark the currency that they are giving to them? So it's just, it's just funny that these people are going to continue to stay, and they are holding sway, and the security agents have not been able to do anything concerning that. So uh, in, in most cases, when companies say openly that we are not negotiating with them, they need the family to to research to set up. Because if you have your work or your or your children being picked up and then your people are getting communicate they are communicating with you to the back end. You try to look for means to solve the particular problem. It's a particular case of OYO on your own. Each of the parents of the pupil that has been kidnapped will look for one way or the other to rescue their work. The government is saying on one side they are not paying ransom. I can assure you that the, the parents of the kidnapped world, if they have the resources, they will keep. 
Well, so, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm a little bit torn because some people came out to say that the president's statement was quite insensitive, um, especially at this time, because like you said, if your word is there, you would definitely want to pay the ransom. But we've seen the rise of this over time. Does it, my, my worry is, Paying of this ransom, doesn't it make them, um, give them more strength, like strengthen them in a way because they know that they would always get the money, right? Um, so if I pay this one billion naira, which is a huge sum of money, maybe another um, terrorist group will come as well and kidnap other people and ask for two billion. And so we're seeing this. So in as much as we know that, you know, maybe the statement from the president, there should be a more subtle way to talk about it or address the issue. Um, don't we think that paying ransom, fine, I, I mean, I don't hope to be in that situation um, because your loved one is there and you just want to get them out regardless of the amount of money. But what way can we use to curtail this? And then another question is, what is the, what are the security agencies doing? Because you can't tell me that you have no intelligence. The writer here talks about how um, the hostages are held in difficult locations. I wonder what that means, what, what it means to be held in a difficult location. Can't you find them? What's it, what, where is the intelligence like that we expect you to have to be able to nab these people and you know, just prosecute them and make sure that uh, this um, menace that is rising stops? So th those are my questions to you now. Well, in fact, the president cannot openly come out to say that they are negotiating with Bali. That's one. Two, it is, it is irresponsible of the security agency to allege that where, where these people are held are uh, difficult to They are They are trained, they are equipped, and they are paid to deal with this with such Issues. Now, if this had happened in the rest of America, they would have sent their slave team. Do we have special forces in the military that are meant to deal with this particular issue? Now, this became a recurrent feature more than 10 years ago. Now, if the military or the security agencies or the intelligence agencies have not developed a special team to deal with kidnapping, it is much left to be desired. And they called out for us to tell them that there is a need for them to put in a special force to deal with this particular issue. That's another. Uh, as far as this issue is concerned, I think the feeling we have had it has to do with intelligence. Intelligence gathering. <laughs> now, are you telling me that before these people struck, the intelligence community? was not able to track, intercept the communication channels or means these people are using. But that's what's surprising to all Nigerians. And for example, you cannot use your phone in Nigeria if you don't have a name. We went we went to God knows what to uh, to, uh, to ensure that our phone our name was linked with our phone and all of that. So, what, what uh, 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 how was that the being helpful in identifying criminal elements in the society? Then, the communities which these people pass through that they use their, their kidnapping out. What have you done to gather intelligence from those communities? From the local to know what is really what is really happening, to know the way and manner of their person. You see, there are so many things that are involved that when you begin to explain, you will think that most of those that have been given responsibility are operating with the seventh sense and not their sixth sense. Anyways, um, I mean, it's quite sad. This is something that is, you know, it's very sensitive. It's a very sensitive topic to talk about. And you just expect um, the government to be able to offer you security. Security is a given. So it's, yeah. it's, it's sad that we're in this and we're seeing this happen 
time and time again. Every, it's almost like every other market day you hear of people getting kidnapped and abducted. And it's really, really heartbreaking. Um, we're hoping that these people will be rescued safely um, and returned back to their families. And I don't know what the government is doing about this, but we just hope that, you know, they're pulling everything in their arsenal to ensure the, the the safety of these kids that have been abducted anyways i want to move over to another headline which is at the bottom and it says politics over it's time for governance tinubu tells governors at ifta when i saw this i was i was a bit mm, Okay, so what has been happening since, or what's happening? Is it politics? Because you expect that, you know, these politicians, they come out, they tell you, um, we want you to vote for us, they campaign, do everything, and make so many lofty promises, right? And then when they get there, they're still playing politics. And right now, the, the president is saying it's time for governance. I want to get your comment on this statement being made by President Tinubu. Well, that should be the standard practice. Exactly. After election, there shouldn't be politics today. Everything should be about governance. But as far as the political class are concerned, every statement think of the next generation. The politicians think of the next election. And the crop of people we have in government are politicians, they are not statesmen. And that's why you see someone that will be in government for more than a quarter of a century. And he will still be interested in, in contesting elections. I think he wants to be the president or governor general or senator general of the entire world. Because I cannot imagine that somebody will be spending quarter of a century in public, in public office. So that's why you see that the politics keeps going on and on and on. Those that are won the election for second time. Are interested in who becomes their successor. You see what played out in Edo State. You saw what played out. Those that won the first time will be interested in winning their second time. You saw what played out in Edo State last year. And if you place you, you, yourself with your success, you saw what happened in, in Kogi State. Even in Kogi State, some of you are led, they don't know who is the governor. Whether it's Ododo or who was elected, quote unquote, by the people, forming legitimately, or the former governor, Yaya Bello. So, as far as the, the, the president has seen that what everybody is concerned about is about their political survival. And when you have a flawed electoral system, an electoral system that is highly flawed, and a judicial system that is questioning, there will be this desperation to engage in political and not governance. Because you don't need the you don't need governance to win elections. You need politics to win the election. So it's as simple as that. When your power does not come from the votes of the people, when you don't derive your sovereignty, the balance system, and then you can only derive your sovereignty either from the judicial system. Or through quote unquote an abracadabra electoral system. And so you're not interested in governance, you're interested in politics. And so that's what we are witnessing. And it's, it's, it's a sorry state because at the end of the day, it is the populace that suffer, it is the people that suffer, it is governance that suffer. You don't get results for the evils of democracy. Look at the drama that happened in the National Assembly in the course of this week. Yeah. Is it about governance or is it about politics? True. Where you allocate resources, you have more than nine territorial districts, and then the allocation of resources, more than nine territorial districts, mm -hmm. is more than what you have allocated to more than one and three territorial districts. Is that governance? Is that equity? Does it, does it represent the Nigerian value? Of unity is strength, mm -hmm. unity is diversity, so we have strength in it. Well, so yeah. that. Yeah, for, for me, I mean, I would just expect that the moment you're being sworn into office, that's that's it. That's where governance starts. It's okay to, you know, do all of your politics when you're campaigning and, you know, you're asking people to vote for you. But the moment you take that oath of office, 
that's what governance starts and we can't be in fact it's really it's, it's funny when i hear this because it's almost a year like the the people who have been elected they're almost a year in office and we can't be talking about governance now i would have expected that since the 29th of may um but anyways i'm going to move over to another headline which says ph refinery that's port Harcourt refinery gets 450,000 barrels of crude resumes operations in april so that's on the punch but it's also on the nation and the nation takes it as carry um port Harcourt refinery resume production in two weeks so we've had um all of these promises we've even heard dangote refinery has you know received crude operations are going to start soon um and well here now Portacot refinery we're just <laughs> hoping to see what that would be but i want to take your comments on this one as well well it's, it's amazing we are just seeing the trailer mm. let's see whether the movie will be released <laughs> um, giving us to this deadline uh, because we've seen the trailers of dangote refinery we've heard of that of Portacot refinery before mm -hmm. I think they are giving us another, another trailer. So let's wait for two weeks. Whether the movie will be distributed to the change of cinema that we have, until we see the production, we take whatever they tell us with the piece of stuff. Because we've had so many promises. So many promises. We've been given so many hope that we became hopeful in hopelessness. Mm -hmm. So I just wait for that two weeks. All right. Um, so another headline on The Nation talks about the federal government insists the discos must recapitalize for efficiency. Um, a few weeks ago, the Minister of Power, you know, had come out to say subsidy, electricity subsidy is not sustainable. Well, now they are being charged to recapitalize for efficiency. What do you think about this one? Well, um, the challenge the power sector is that we have not had a total um, deregulation of that sector. There are two valuations. We have the GENCOs, which are the generating, which are the base of, of the generate. And then we have um, the discos, which are the, are the, are the at the top of the of the value chain, which are um, the ones we deal with, you get the electricity, equip distribution company, and the rest of it. And then in the middle of the value chain is the transmission at the fish coast. So the gas poles and the fish coast are still controlled by the government. What are the investments we have made for transmission? All of the challenges we have having that you know we are not we are generating, even though what we are generating is not is not enough. But when it generates and use the transmission lines that you have you have installed since nineteen forty eight, that you have not made investment by the time the transmission companies will transmit what they have generated. The power they have generated will have transmitted. So what they have given to the discos is not more than enough. So what government needs to do is to divest in the genocodes and the discos. Hmm. Let's have complete overall, complete deregulation. And I can assure you that what happened in the telco sector mm. will happen. Initially, the prices will go up, but because you have many players, they are competing. They crash. And they want to sell their product. Yeah. So the price will come down. Just like we have in the telco sector. You will recall how much the thing was sold in 2001. All right. If, well, you wake up, if you tell someone that is 21 year old or 22 year old or 23 year old that is seen, was going for more than 100,000. Mm. They don't believe you that it happened in 2001. That you need thousands of naira to buy a thing that is just as free as anything. So that's just, that's what we need to do. Otherwise, the minister will come, the minister will go. You recall, when Pachala was government of Lagos, he said any government that cannot provide power for six months. They have no idea. In use one time, we use a labor. We call them back to earlier. But for four years, he was not able to do anything. Mm -hmm. He was super back to earlier. He had to leave our industry and concentrate on our things and works. So there's no magic one that anybody can bring to solve the problem. 
except okay. if you put the bull by the horn. Yeah. It is government take off. It stands in the gel post and it is and it is close. All right, so I want to take um, another one, which would just kind of wrap it up because we're a little bit out of time. So this is the major headline on The Nation, and it says, Federal Government eases access to student loan in new proposal. And it's also on The Guardian as well. So um, I want to, okay, on The Guardian it says, Federal Government seeks new student loan act to jail term for offenders. Um, you know, when, the, when, the, uh, when this came uh, as, as of last year, the uh, eligibility, the criteria was um, to ensure that you're not le earning your family's income is about 500,000. You have two guarantors who um, are in level 12 of the national, um, of the civil service, and you need someone who is in um, like a justice of peace to be able to sign for you as well. So the criteria was a bit steep and there wasn't easy access or people had said there wouldn't be easy access for that but now we're seeing them drop some of these things i want to get your comment on this new student loan act when when you see act will put in place and the requirement when we saw the requirement you know it was still difficult mm. you have just provided a venue for the bureaucracy to benefit from it. Now, why would you want to get anything done? Everything that you have 12, level 13, level 14 in the civil service, you look for judges and the rest of it. Does it mean that only people with well meaning intentions are in government? There are no other people with well intentions. Your clerics in your place of worship, your traditional ruler, or people of good stature in the society, apart from those working in the civil service, who are actually, quote unquote, the most corrupt set of people are the ones that will guarantee those that will take the loan. Mm. That, that we, we all need to know that, that 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 act will not see the light of you because the conditions are just too stringent for anybody to meet up with. And because the government was interested in scoring this political point, other than getting a policy. But achieving a policy, policy goal, that was why government quickly announced, and they quickly rushed in coming up with that act, mm. and today they have to go and look at the act all over again. As far as I'm concerned, government should make it easier for people to access loans. Mm. If you access this loan, in whatever means that this will by government, it should not be stringent, right. and then it should be held accountable. Yeah. And this loan should be paid over. The way, the way it is done in United States of America, I'm not too sure they have all these kind of stringent requirements that you must get somebody that works in Washington mm -hmm. or works with federal government in the United States of America to sign one document or the other for you. What's your social security number? Which is our national identification number. And yeah. all of this, it will not for you to guarantee you any loan. All right. Um, well, we hope that, you know, <laughs> I mean, people can easily access these loans. One of the questions I had asked earlier on was, um, can they pay for it in two years? Because you have to be able to pay for it two years after your, um, your youth service course. So Obama, we just... Obama, Obama did not pay his own loan. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Mr. DJ Johnson, we're a little bit out of time. We have to go. Okay, so before I let you go, right, I mean, I'm just going to say it is worthy of note. There is another paper, the Business NG. You don't have to make any comments, but just in case for people who want to read it. So the major headline on this one says, Rising food prices stop poor Nigerians from suffering IMF to the federal government. And then there's a smaller headline at the top that says, Food security, FG signs 995 million euros deal to create agric mechanization hubs in 774 local government areas well we hope that you know this would just help with the food um, prices the, the land, food supply where is the land where is the land for agriculture in the park of dialogue government anyways where we, we cannot dive into this conversation now local government. Mm. where is the land for uh, for agriculture in the local island local government my friend Mm. Have a wonderful weekend. All I right, thank that. you so much. We really appreciate you coming. It's always a pleasure having you on our program. Thank you so much. 
Okay, we've been speaking with Jide Johnson, is the chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, who's joining us from here in Lagos State. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs> 